As of April 10th, 2017, the animated classic Ferngully The Last Rainforest is 25 years old. I can only imagine that prior to clicking on this video, you probably hadn't thought about this film in give or take two decades. Some argue that this movie was ahead of its time, but whether you agree with that or not, here's 10 facts, or all you need to know, about Ferngully The Last Rainforest. Ferngali, The Last Rainforest is based on a series of short stories of the same name written by Diana Young, wife of the movie's producer, Wayne Young. The Youngs always hoped to adapt Ferngali for an animated film, but it took nearly 15 years after the story was written to finally get a movie made. Production for the movie took place from late 1990 through 1991, with a November 91 release date planned. The release of Ferngali will be pushed back until April 1992 to avoid competition with Disney's Beauty and the Beast. Ferngali will be released on April 10th, 1992 at 1400 theaters across the US. On its opening weekend, Ferngali would make a domestic gross of $3,549,338 and place in fifth at the box office behind Sleepwalkers, Basic Instinct, White Men Can't Jump, and Beethoven. Ferngali would stay in theaters for eight weeks, bringing its domestic total to $24,650,296. On the list of top 100 highest grossing films of 1992, Ferngali is the 51st, right behind The Cutting Edge and narrowly beating out Hoffa. Ferngali was the third highest grossing G-rated film of 1992. That sounds impressive until you realize that there were only seven other contenders and two of those were re-released Disney classics. Beating out Ferngully for the number two spot was The Muppets Christmas Carol, a personal favorite of mine, with $27 million, and then at number one was Disney's Aladdin, with roughly $217 million domestically. Aladdin also holds the number one spot of the highest grossing films of 1992, beating out the likes of Batman Returns and Home Alone 2. Ferngully features the voices of Samantha Mathis as Krista, Jonathan Ward as Zack, Christian Slater as Pips, Robin Williams as Batty Coda, Tim Curry as Hexus, Grace Zabriskie as Maggie Loon, and Cheech Marin and Tommy Chong as the Beatle Brothers Stump and Root, respectively. Rapper Tone Loke also appears briefly as the Lizard Goanna and performs the song, If I'm Gonna Eat Somebody, It Might As Well Be You. Ferngali was released right at the height of Disney's animated renaissance, and although it had all of the right ingredients to be a big hit, it just lacked the proper marketing or the name Disney slapped on the title. Disney is often credited with creating the trend of casting A-list celebrity voice actors, starting with Robin Williams as the voice of Genie in Aladdin. However, Ferngali's Batty Coda was actually Williams' first role in an animated film, beating Genie to the screen by seven months. Much like Genie, Batty also had a penchant for improvised lines and celebrity impressions. In addition, Ferngully also somehow managed to beat Disney to Elton John. Yes, The Lion King's Elton John. The song Some Other World was written and performed by Elton John and marked his first involvement in an animated film. While Ferngully featured the gratuitous use of several pop songs, it also had an original 44-minute score composed by Alan Silvestri. While you may not know his name, you have heard of his work. Silvestri was the man behind the music for the Back to the Future trilogy, Forrest Gump, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, The Night the Museum franchise, Predator, Lilo and Stitch, Grumpy Old Men, The Polar Express, and The Avengers, among many, many others. Wait, didn't he also do the Super Mario Brothers movie? Can't win them all, I guess. The antagonist of the film, Hexus, is voiced by none other than Tim Curry. While you might know him from Clue or as Dr. Frankenfurter from the Rocky Horror Picture Show, this man has lent his voice to literally dozens of animated projects. Wait, I'm not actually going to list these, am I? Oh, all right, okay. All right, he was involved with Paddington Bear, Peter Pan and the Pirates, Gravedale High, Wake, Rattle, and Roll, Tiny Toon Adventures, Tailspin, The Pirates of Darkwater, The Legend of Prince Valiant, Captain Planet and the Planet Tears, Darkwing Duck, Fish Police, Wild West Cowboys of Mumesa, The Little Mermaid Animated Series, Mighty Max, one of my favorites, Ah, Real Monsters, Duckman, Sonic the Hedgehog, The Aladdin Animated Series, Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad, Turbocharged Thunderbirds, The Mask Animated Series, 
Gargoyles, Mighty Ducks, Jumanji Animated Series, Freakazoid, Where on Earth is Carmen Sandiego? Voltron, The Third Dimension, The Wild Thornberries, Smashing! Hey Arnold, Cyber 9, The Big Guy and Rusty the Boy Robot, Timo and Primo, Samurai Jack, The Adventures of Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius, Young Justice, and Star Wars The Clone Wars. <sighs> if I forgot anything, let me know down in the comments. I'm sure I missed something. That man has done um, everything. Speaking of Hexus and Tim Curry, the final cut of his song Toxic Love is much different from the original drafts. While the scene in the movie is still chock full of sexual themes and innuendos, previous versions were much, much, much worse. If you look hard enough, the original version is still out there on the internet, as is everything else, and you can see for yourself that several verses or lines from the song were rewritten or cut completely to make it more appropriate. A G rating will only allow you to fetishize a little bit, not a lot. Stop me if you've heard this one before. A man enters a new land with the intent of plundering or exploiting its inhabitants, but instead falls in love with a woman and her culture. In the end, he finds himself rising up against former friends and colleagues to protect his new home and their way of life. Quick, which movie am I describing? Avatar? Pocahontas? Ferngali? Dances with Wolves? If you said any of these, then you're right. However, since James Cameron's Avatar was released in 2009, there's been a tiny little itty bitty part of the internet that's been very vocal over the similarities between Ferngali and Avatar. Go, look it up. Dozens of articles all decrying plagiarism over a few similar plot points. While I personally believe it is just coincidence, it's nice to know that people actually remember Ferngali enough to care about over 20 years later. Ferngali was nominated for and lost the 1992 Annie Award for Best Animated Film. However, it did win a special jury prize at the 1993 Fanta Festival, the Genesis Award for Best Animated Film, and an award from Environmental Media Awards. Convenient. In 1998, 20th Century Fox released a direct-to-video sequel, Ferngully 2, The Magical Rescue. This cash grab lacked every member of the original voice cast and was also universally panned by critics. While there are no apparent plans to reboot or remake Ferngali, I am sure it's only a matter of time. And there you have it, 10 facts you probably didn't know about Ferngali, The Last Rainforest. You're now a little smarter and a little wiser, even if this information won't get you anywhere. Let me know in the comments what facts surprise you, or if I forgot any facts. Social media links are down below, or you can follow me over on theactiveretro.com. If you like this video, hit like, and if you like this channel, hit subscribe. Thank you for watching.